alas, the day is here where we finally get to learn some JavaScript stuff. All right, let's go ahead and just start with the basics. So the very first thing I want to do is show you how we're going to kind of interpret what our code is actually doing. And for now, the number one way of doing that is by printing values to our console. So to print a value to our console, we're going to use this function called console.log. Now, whatever I put inside of here is exactly what it's going to show me. So first I'm gonna pass it what's called a string. We'll worry a little bit about more about what that is later. We'll pass it a string that says, hello world. Okay, I'm gonna give this a save. And now I'm gonna type in node app.js to see what this equals. So I run it and of course it prints out hello world to the screen. Now, if I delete these quotations, I want to guess, I want you to guess what this is going to output and why. All right, I'm gonna give you 20 seconds. Actually, you could just pause the video and then I'm gonna give the answer immediately. <laughs> okay, so if I actually run this, it is now going to say, uh-oh, it says missing blank after arguments list. So first of all, it's interpreting this not as a string anymore. It's now interpreting it as two variables is what it's interpreting it as. And furthermore, it's interpreting it as two variables that are not separated in an argument list. Watch this. So now we're gonna get, now that I put a comma here, we're gonna get an even different error. So now we're gonna get, hmm, now it says hello is not defined. Okay, what does that mean? Well, the reason why this is happening is what we're going to talk about today. It's JavaScript variables. That's what we want to talk about. And by the way, variables is not specific to JavaScript. If you understand variables in JavaScript, you understand it in every language. So let's go ahead and talk about some things that we need to understand about variables. First, we need to understand what are JavaScript variables, okay? And I wrote a little definition there. Let's ignore it for now. We'll bring it back, all right? So a JavaScript variable allows us to store things in our computer's memory temporarily. Okay, so let's, bam, pull that up. The John Higger definition is a variable stores shit temporarily in memory. Pretty close, it just has some more colorful language. Great. All right, now the next question is, how do we define them, okay? So when we define a variable, what we're going to say is we're going to give a keyword here, which if you've been doing any of that, like free code camp stuff, that's like what let, var, uh, const, that's what those are. And we will talk a little bit more about what a keyword does later. For now, I'm going to tell you to just use let all the time, and then we'll change our definition of that as time goes on. Um, then your variable name. So let's say I want to create a variable called A. I could do something like let a equal and then the value that I want it to equal. One thing I want to talk about real quick here is this single equal sign means a different thing than a double equals or a triple equals in JavaScript. And this equal sign in JavaScript means you are declaring a value. So I will always use this single equal sign to set the value of something. Cool. That's what this little note is right here. All right. So let's go ahead and make a variable. If I have console.log, I, I want a console.log hello world again, but this time I wanna make a variable, okay? So I wanna store hello world in a variable called greeting. So I'm gonna make a variable, I'm gonna say, let greeting equal hello world. And now, because greeting is equal to this string that is hello world, I can go ahead and swap out this for greeting and everything should work fine and dandy. Let's go ahead and run it. Bam, it works. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Look at that, that's pretty sweet. So this would be a very basic example of why I might want to use a variable. So let's say I have a user input, okay? This will be a good example. I can't remember, let's see, 
there's like a read line node. I want to show y'all maybe a good use case for this. I, I don't do this type of stuff in node very often. Read line. Let's see. Oh, okay, cool. Nope. Yeah, will that work? Hmm. Input node. There's like a way to do this. I just don't remember it. Wow. That's more work than I would have thought. Well, let's go ahead and show you. Uh, get, there should be a simpler one. Hang on, let me check. Nope, nope, it's more complicated. All right, well, we'll deal with that another time. So let's imagine that I can have a user input a value. Maybe I have a name. Let name equal John. And this is going to be a, a value that the user supplies. We could actually go into this in a little bit. I didn't want to, I didn't realize how complicated it was in Node. It's not that complicated, but it's complicated enough to maybe mess up a beginner. But let's just imagine I want to now console.log uh, hello and then the person's name, right? So maybe I'll do hello and then a little space. And I could do console.log greeting and then comma to do the next thing, name. Or I can just do it in two separate lines. I could do console.log.greeting, console.log name. Now, as you might imagine, I could get hello, John. And then all I would need to do to make this code work for a different person is change the value of name. Hello, Hector. Now this might kind of give you some insight as to the value the value that variables give us. It allows us to make the same lines of code work, but with different values. So for example, let's go ahead and call this three times. Bam. If I want to console.log three different people, I can change the value of name. Name, Jimmy, name, Jeff Dunham. So now when I run this, using this line of code, this line of code, these lines of code, they're all the same lines of code. And all I needed to do was change the name and now it says, hello, Hector. Hello, Jimmy. Hello, Jeff Dunham. This is the value of variables, is that we can reuse the same code, but plug in different values. Pretty fucking sweet. Well, that will get even a little bit better once we start getting to like functions and stuff. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is this concept of, hey, do we notice how in here we have quotes and then stuff inside of it. This concept is called data types. I'm actually gonna do that in the next lesson and stop this lesson here with variables, okay? Um, we do need to talk about this keyword. That'll also be another lesson. All right, cool.